to the platform Swiss Liver Patients Association, Swiss HIPAA, today with the presentation of Dr. Matt Naomi Lange, assistant doctor at the Insel Hospital in Bern, about fatty liver, NASH, or MAFLD. Welcome, Dr. Lange. Thank you for this kind introduction. My name is Naomi Lang, and I will be talking about metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease, or also non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I am a medical doctor at the Liver Center in Bern, in the Spital. So what is fatty liver disease? Fatty liver is a condition where fat is accumulated in liver cells in the so-called hepatocytes. And you can see this below here, these white spots in the liver cells, this is uh, fat accumulation. If more than 5% of liver cells are affected, we call this fatty liver disease. Fatty liver disease has many different uh, causes. Among the common causes are metabolic factors, such as diabetes type 2, overweight, and other components of the so-called metabolic syndrome, such as uh, hypertension and uh, elevated blood uh, lipids. Other common causes include alcohol consumption, and um, there is more and uh, less common causes, such as certain medications, hormonal conditions, and genetic diseases. In this talk, I will focus on fatty liver that is associated with metabolic factors, but you can find more information on alcohol-related fatty liver disease in a talk by Dr. Rodriguez, my colleague from Bern, um, which is also here on the Swiss HEPA site. Now, a little bit about the definitions of NAFLD and MAFLD. NAFLD means non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And as the name says, this diagnosis requires the exclusion of significant alcohol consumption. It furthermore requires the exclusion of other causes of liver disease. So also viral hepatitis, uh, autoimmune hepatitis. And um, this means it's essentially a diagnosis of exclusion. Whereas the new definition of metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease or MAFLD focuses on um, metabolic or on the diagnosis of metabolic conditions. So once we see a steatosis, we uh, assess the patient's um, metabolic status and look for metabolic conditions. And if there is at least um, uh, one or two of uh, metabolic comorbidities such as uh, type 2 diabetes, overweight and obesity, or um, other components of the metabolic syndrome, we give the diagnosis of metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease. So the exclusion of other liver diseases is not required. So you can have a MAFLD with viral hepatitis or a MAFLD with autoimmune hepatitis, for example. A third cause of fatty liver disease, as mentioned before, is alcohol-related uh, fatty liver disease. And I will be not be going into detail here. The threshold currently um, is uh, 20 grams per day for women or 30 grams of alcohol per day for men. And uh, above this threshold, um, you would uh, traditionally talk about alcohol-related liver disease. Um, and you would hear more about this in a talk from my colleague, Dr. Rodriguez. Now, how do we diagnose NAFLD and MAFLD? In clinical routine, most commonly, we see uh, fat in the liver in the ultrasound. So a patient would, for example, go to his family doctor and have an abdominal ultrasound and come back with a suspicion of uh, fatty liver disease. Other imaging techniques such as MRI can also be used to diagnose uh, fatty liver disease. In both the ultrasound and the MRI, we can assess more than just uh, the, the fat content. We can also look at the stiffness of the liver, which gives us a good idea about the elasticity and the maybe degree of uh, and stadium of the disease. We can also do this with specialized devices such as a fibro scan uh, device. Furthermore, the suspicion of, uh, of fatty liver disease can be made in with blood parameters. So 
you can use a specialized score that utilizes routine blood tests and other parameters such as maybe age, uh, BMI, et cetera, to um, assess the, the probability of fatty liver disease. There's also specialized blood tests available, but these are mostly only available in liver centers or um, in specialized laboratories. It is important to note in this context that normal liver values do not exclude fatty liver disease. So in any case, um, a specialized score or test should be, be used. And if there is a suspicion of liver disease, um, you would be referred for further testing, such as imaging or a liver stiffness measurement. In some cases, for the staging of the disease, we need to perform a liver tissue sample, a liver biopsy. This is reserved for, for uh, special cases only as this is an invasive technique and of course uh, also uh, painful for the patient. MAFLD and NAFLD is extremely common. So as you can see here on this map, between 14 or 13 to 30% to of the population, depending on the region, um, are affected. In South America, um, the prevalence is highest with around one third of the population um, having fatty liver disease or MAFLD. In Europe, it's about a quarter of the population, which is also the case for Switzerland. So, Estimates have shown that by 2030, around 24% of the population will have fatty liver disease. And this means that about that over 2 million people in Switzerland um, will be living with MAFLD and NAFLD. The symptoms of MAFLD and NAFLD are very uh, wide and are also pretty vague, especially in, in early stages. The severity of the symptoms depends largely on the stage of the disease. So in early stages, patients often report very unspecific symptoms such as uh, fatigue, discomfort, uh, maybe a bit difficulty concentrating on tasks. And an intermediate stage where there is more of an inflammation and maybe also um, scarring of the liver tissue, so-called fibrosis, um, these symptoms would, uh, would maybe increase and patients report um, fullness, abdominal tension, increased fatigue. In very advanced stages, um, a complete scarring of the liver tissue, so-called liver cirrhosis, um, you would have very severe symptoms, um, a loss of muscle tissue, a yellow discoloration of the skin and eyes, um, maybe free water in the, in the abdomen, uh, confusion, uh, high risk inf of infections, etc. And these then are uh, very, um, very severe stages of the condition. The populations are affected very differently by MAFLD. So if we look here in the overall population, most um, individuals have a healthy or non-fatty liver, which is uh, depicted here in gray. And as we have seen, around a quarter um, already have some fattening in, in the liver tissue, but only very few people are severely affected. Now, this changes in, in other patient groups, such as pe persons with overweight. Here, the numbers in the literature differ um, quite widely, but at about at least 50% of patients with uh, obesity and overweight um, already have uh, fatty liver um, disease. And among those, more patients are severely affected. Another group that is uh, especially affected by this disease is persons with diabetes mellitus type 2. Here around 70%, so the majority of patients with type 2 diabetes have uh, fatty liver disease. And around 20% even have a more severe uh, fatty liver disease, which means that there is already some degree of scarring um, in the liver tissue. Now, this is uh, to some degree associated also with the factors that contribute to the development of severe liver disease in MAFLD and NAFLD. 
a main risk factor is obesity. And studies have shown that obesity that is centered around the, the abdomen is especially detrimental for, for liver health. Another condition, as uh, I have shown previously, that is associated with severe uh, MAFLD and NAFLD is diabetes type 2 or certain forms of prediabetes. Furthermore, the risk of severe liver disease increases with increasing age. And in women especially, this risk changes with onset of menopause due to hormonal changes. Another factor that is important to consider is alcohol consumption, even uh, alcohol consumption that is below the thresholds that I've mentioned before can lead to a more severe um, scarring of the liver tissue. There are certain genetic factors um, that will lead to more, uh, more serious disease and uh, a lot, many more risk factors exist such as inactive lifestyle, um, hormonal conditions, for example, uh, thyroid um, dysfunction or polycystic ovary syndrome in females. So one of the, the questions that I hear most often is whether fatty liver disease is dangerous. And this depends largely on the stage of the disease. In any case, fatty liver disease should be taken seriously and a thorough investigation for staging of the disease should be performed promptly. In an early stage, um, studies have shown that patients have an increased risk for further metabolic diseases, for example, the onset of uh, type two diabetes mellitus, and then also an increased risk for cardiovascular events such as myocardial infarction, a heart attack. In intermediate stages, where there's more inflammation and more scarring or fibrosis of the liver tissue, the risk of permanent liver damage increases. And this will lead to the advanced stage as previously shown, the so-called liver cirrhosis, where there's a high risk of serious liver related events. For example, bleeding from uh, varices in the, the esophagus. And also a high risk of cardiovascular events and uh, an increased risk for liver cancer. Now, this leads me to the progression or uh, the, the natural history of fatty liver disease. As shown, we start with a fatty liver, which may progress to an inflammation. Um, uh, this is, a, this is a called steatohepatitis. And from this inflammation, we or the liver develops scarring, the so-called fibrosis. And in an advanced stage, this is called uh, liver cirrhosis, which is a, almost a complete scarring of the, the liver tissue. And so healthy liver tissue um, is destroyed and replaced by scars. At this stage, um, there's a high risk of, of uh, liver cancer, so-called hepatocellular carcinoma. In very rare cases, there might be uh, liver cancer before complete scarring or liver cirrhosis, but this uh, is really um, not, not very common. It's also important to know that many patients remain stable at an early stage of the disease and never develop uh, severe uh, NAFLD or MAFLD. However, Currently, we do not know how to identify patients who will progress or who will stay in, in a stable early stage of the disease. Presence of risk factors that I mentioned before, of course, increases the risk of uh, progressing to more severe stages. And another fact that is important to know is that the disease usually progresses slowly. So patients stay in early stages of the disease for many years before they progress to more advanced stages. But again, here we see very, um, very different co or, uh, courses of the disease. So some patients might uh, progress more, more rapidly. And uh, also here, we don't really know which patients progress rapidly and which patients um, stay in, in, stable in the disease in an early stage of the disease. 
The treatment of fatty liver disease currently um, relies on lifestyle, which is very effective in treating the condition. There's no medication currently approved in Switzerland. However, we think that this will likely change in the, in the coming years. But for now, lifestyle is a great, uh, great treatment option. So most importantly, uh, weight reduction of about 7 to 10% of body weight for overweight individuals can lead to a reduction of the, of the fattening of the liver and also of the inflammation and maybe also uh, of uh, regression to regression of fibrosis in the liver. For normal weight individuals, positive effects can be found with reduction of three to 5% of body weight. This body weight reduction should be accomplished by increasing physical activity. And this can be small things such as uh, maybe gardening or going for walks um, several times during the week or ideally every day. Important are also dietary changes. Um, especially the Mediterranean diet has been found to be very helpful in MAFLD, NAFLD. And this means that you should consume uh, a lot of vegetables, a lot of lean protein, ideally also from plant-based sources, uh, such as beans, for example, or white meat. Um, and you should reduce uh, the consumption of red meat and also of uh, animal fats, such as maybe butter or cream. Then abstaining from alcohol and nicotine are extremely helpful in the treatment of NAFLD and MAFLD. And also it is important to treat concomitant metabolic diseases such as um, type two diabetes and arterial hypertension, et cetera. Now alcohol has in, in the setting of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease has been a, an issue of debate. In generally, we would say as little as possible, even in early stages, this can be detrimental for your liver health. In any advanced stages, alcohol um, should be avoided completely. And if you have any, any questions about this, or if you maybe are looking for support to uh, abstain from alcohol or also quit smoking, um, do not hesitate to address this topic with your family doctor. In Switzerland, there are currently numerous studies about non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And these are both medication or clinical trials where a new medication is being tested, but also um, observational studies where there is no intervention or no medication. So we can just see how the disease progresses, for example. If you're interested in participating in a study, um, please contact a liver center near you or talk to your family doctor. Um, you can find also information about trials and burn on our website uh, of the Swiss Liver Foundation. Now, if you have any questions about uh, non-alcoholic or metabolic dysfunction associated fatty liver disease, or would like to know about your personal risk for NAFLD, MAFLD, um, I suggest you talk to your family doctor or a liver specialist near you. You can also find more information on the homepage of the Swiss Nash Foundation, uh, which is listed here, or you can contact us through Twitter or Facebook. And thank you for your attention. Many thanks for the instructive and exciting presentation of Dr. Lange and your great personal commitment. Thank you very much, Dr. Lange.